right in. So we've got about 20 to 25 minutes this morning. I'm just going to give you guys um, basically an overview of Rocky Mountaineer, the route, the service levels, um, what's new for our 2019 season, because uh, hopefully you've all got um, in store or at your um, home offices the brand new 2019 Bound for Incredible Rocky Mountaineer brochure. Um, speaking of which, the um, photo that you see on your screen at the moment, uh, that's the new front cover of the 2019 brochure. So those beautiful um, snow-capped mountains in the background, a bit of a, a bit of snow beside uh, the train there. Uh, pretty much looking at April, May departures, so uh, the spring departures or nearing into the end of the season, October, to be able to see these kind of images with that snow just beside the train there. Absolutely spectacular. So let's jump right in. Um, I'm going to do an overview just briefly so you're all aware of um, where we're at basically with Rocky Mountaineer. So when we refer to Rocky Mountaineer, we like to talk about the four S's um, and it's one way to understand the elements that make up the Rocky Mountaineer journey and what makes it so special and uh, so distinctive. So we've got the sweet and savoury element. So that's of course the food on board. So um, in each service level, silver and gold, all our meals and beverages are included from the start through to the end of their journey. So um, they spend two days on board the train. So from the minute they get on the train, um, it is an all-inclusive service. Uh, once they get off the train, they will um, depart either in Kamloops, Whistler or Quinell, depending on their route, um, and dinner will be at um, your client's own expense. But generally, if um, they've boarded our train, they've eaten our meals, and they've had a few wines or beers or beverages to go with that, um, they're getting off the train and they're probably pretty full. So um, not too much dinner is usually needed for those overnight stops. But the um, food on board is world class and um, our executive chefs are just absolutely amazing. They create a menu which is um, really diversified, but it's all sourced from the region, so it's all really fresh ingredients. The second element is the service. So this is from our amazing hosts, our guest service team on board, and also our destination teams as well. So at, on departure and arrival, we'll have our destinations teams there to help greet your clients and um, basically bid them farewell from those different destinations that they're boarding uh, the train from. But the hosts on board, so in Goldleaf, there's four hosts and in Silverleaf there's two hosts per carriage and they look after your clients every step of the way. Any questions that they may have, um, anything um, that they need right throughout their journey. The scenery, so obviously we don't take credit for the amazing mountains, but if anyone has been to Canada, the scenery is absolutely spectacular. And we offer the very best option to see that scenery through our all dome fleet in our silver and gold leaf service. And I'll go over that in a little bit more detail. And then of course the last S is the socialization. So this is basically your guests making new friends, whether it be the hosts on board, the wildlife that they see along the way, or the person that they find themselves sitting in front or behind of on board the train. Everyone is friends by the end of the trip. So for your guests, we have um, four routes basically for them to choose from. So we have the coastal passage. So this has been a slight change going into 2019 season. So departing from Seattle through to Vancouver, onto Kamloops and finishing up in Lake Louise or Banff. So this is a three day rail journey now. You used to be able to combine it with the Rainforest to Gold Rush or the journey through the clouds, but um, that is no longer possible, so it is a three-day journey from Seattle through to Lake Louise or Banff. We have first passage to the west, which is Vancouver through to Lake Louise or Banff. So journey through the clouds, which is the blue line heading up into Jasper. And sorry, I've just remembered I can use my cursor because you can see that. And then we have Rainforest to Gold Rush, which is the green line, which is our three-day journey as well, heading through Whistler and Quinell around to Jasper. Um, so looking at the different routes, your guests can choose. So Rainforest to Gold Rush, this is our lesser known route. Um, it has a smaller operating season, so it operates from May through to September, where um, first passage to the Western Journey through the clouds is April through to October. So it's a slightly shorter season um, and generally a smaller train on this route as well. So um, seats are limited and it's best to book early for uh, Rainforest to Gold Rush. So we depart Vancouver in the morning about 7 a.m. and arrive into Whistler just um, about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. So they've got the full afternoon and evening to explore Whistler. 
Then they're back on the train early the next morning for a full day up to Quinell and a full day around to Jasper. Um, I'm going to send you guys out an email after the webinar with basically a link to this particular route and I'll do the same for every route. It's a YouTube video, it's around about two minutes and it really highlights and showcases for your clients exactly what they're going to see on board this route. So I'm not going to go into too much detail um, about the scenery but on every single route your guests choose it's going to be spectacular scenery and this one really has it all. It goes from beautiful lakes and rivers through to fjords, glaciers. Years. Um, then you're going through a gold mining town which is Quinell so it's quite um, bare landscape and then you head around into the amazing Canadian Rockies. Journey through the clouds, Vancouver up to Jasper. So this one is a two day trip. So full day, departing Vancouver around about 7 a.m. into Kamloops and then departing Kamloops around about the same time, 7 a.m. in the morning and arriving into Jasper anywhere from about 5 p.m. in the afternoon. This is actually my favourite route um, and I know we shouldn't have favourites, just like children, but this one definitely is, was a real highlight for me um, when I was on board the train. So from Vancouver to Kamloops, absolutely spectacular scenery, you're going from the beautiful lush rainforest of Vancouver past uh, the Fraser River, pretty much following that all the way into Kamloops until you meet up with the Thompson. You spend the night in Kamloops which is like a desert town so in the uh, peak of summer it can be anywhere from 40 degrees in Kamloops but then you jump back on train on the train the next morning and head up to Jasper. You go past a couple of highlights The one that I love to point out is Pyramid Falls. It's absolutely spectacular coming out of the top of the mountain it literally falls underneath the train and if you're standing in gold leaf out on that um, outdoor viewing area so you can see I guess here taking a photo of Mount Robson you can actually feel the spray from the falls so you're that close to it it's um, really something special and then of course you see this spectacular Mount Robson you have in the background here before arriving in the beautiful township of Jasper. First passage to the west is also a two-day journey so from Vancouver through to Kamloops so we're taking exactly the same train line that we do on journey through the clouds on this day and then once we depart Kamloops we head straight across into Alberta and uh, your guests can choose depending on their itinerary to depart in Lake Louise or Banff so um, this is all going to be pre-booked before they go it's not something they can decide when they get there and the reason that we have the two stops um, is really to help free up that hotel inventory as well so most guests will visit Lake Louise and Banff and it's about 45 minutes to an hour apart driving from Lake Louise to Banff so it is really close together and your guests um, most likely will do both depending on their itinerary. But from Kamloops through to Lake Louise and Banff as you're coming into the Canadian Rockies again it's absolutely spectacular they head through the spiral tunnels which is an engineering marvel and the absolute hardest part of the Canadian Rockies to actually build the train line to cross and being called the first passage to the west it is the first train line that linked the east coast right through to the west coast and we're actually the only tourist train running on um, this train track now so it is something really special for your clients and then we have the coastal passage as I mentioned this one has changed slightly for the 2019 season going from Seattle through Vancouver, Kamloops and then straight on to Lake Louise or Banff. So your guests can choose how many nights they stay in Seattle and in Vancouver and then of course they stay over in the Canadian Rockies as well. And then we have circle journeys so this is for your clients that really want to have it all and to make the most of their Rocky Mountaineer experience. So a circle journey is going to start and end in the same point. So for instance, they can come from Vancouver through Kamloops across to Banff. They can then get on one of our sightseeing coaches up to Jasper and then back on the train around through Quinell and Whistler. And this is becoming a really popular option here in Australia um, for your guests to basically make the most of that um, Rocky Mountaineer spend five days on the train and only pretty much a day here on a coach and half a day here on a coach so um, some spectacular scenery to be seen. So looking at what's new for 2019 so we have a couple of new itineraries for your guests to choose from they are all self-drive itineraries so um, basically this one here first passage to the west can more self-drive so this is two days on board the train full Rocky Mountaineer service still believe for gold leaf depending on your guest choice 
They'll spend a night in Vancouver, heading through Kamloops, and then they'll disembark the train in Banff in the evening. They'll pick up their hire car and they'll drive straight through to the township of Camel. The round's about a half an hour drive from Banff. They'll spend two nights in Camel. They'll still have the car, they'll then drive through to Lake Louise and then they'll finish up driving onto Calgary where they'll have one last night and they'll drop their car at the airport before they board their flights for their ongoing, whether they're continuing on with the holiday or just heading home. So the township of Canmore is a picture postcard mountain community. And um, it's an authentic mountain town offering stunning views and a really laid back atmosphere. So as I said, only about 20 minutes to half an hour out of Banff. It is um, home to accomplished athletes, artists and artisans with walking and cycling paths me meandering through the town. So it's great uh, if anyone's a bit of a hiker or they want to just jump on a bike and go for a bit of a cycle. Um, and as I said, it's quite a laid back um, atmosphere and as you can see in the background there of that image, it's absolutely stunning, the township of Canmore. So they'll have, as I mentioned, the um, two nights there. The second new itinerary we have is First Passage to the West Sunshine Village Self Drive. So for those of you that have perhaps been to Banff, you might have taken the gondola up to Sunshine Village. So in the winter, um, it's absolutely fantastic for skiing, but in the summer, it's amazing for hiking. So they'll have that first passage to the West train ride through to Banff. They'll pick up the car, they'll head through to Sunshine Village for two nights up to Lake Louise for a night and then on to Calgary to finish their trip. So uh, the Sunshine Mountain Lodge is where they'll stay in the Sunshine Village and it's located up the gondola ride from uh, the township of uh, Banff. It's open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. the gondola itself. So they leave their car at the bottom and they'll catch the gondola up. If your guests arrive in after 5 p.m., which most of them will out of Banff and heading into the Sunshine Village, there's a van that will basically shuttle the guests up to the village uh, for that first evening and then they'll be able to catch the gondola up and down for the rest of their trip. So you can see here this image, absolutely spectacular. Everywhere you look in uh, BC and Alberta, the scenery is absolutely stunning. Um, but it's one of the three major resorts located um, in Banff National Park. It's an elevation of 7,200 feet. And as you can see, those beautiful uninterrupted or inspiring views. It's Canada's number one hiking area. So plenty of nature walks, rides, biking. Uh, there's also hot springs and um, six hiking trails that uh, take you through the untouched wilderness around Sunshine Meadows and the village itself. The third itinerary we have is First Passage to the West, Kananaskis Self Drive. So this one again, First Passage to the West on the train through to Banff. They're picking up a car and heading through to Kananaskis. It's about a 45 minute drive from Banff through to Kananaskis for their two night stay up to Lake Louise for overnight and then down to Calgary for an overnight stay. So this particular package includes the two-night stay in Kananaskis at uh, the recently refurbished Pomeroy Kananaskis Mountain Lodge. It's received a $33 million renovation, which includes a new Nordic spa and five restaurants on site. And uh, this is it pictured here in the beautiful township of Kananaskis with all of those mountains in the background that you can see there, the Canadian Rockies. Um, it's still close enough to Banff and um, to explore the Banff National Park and you'll head back through to Lake Louise of course and then on to Calgary um, and great for bikes, mountain biking, horse, riding horses, playing golf, you can go whitewater rafting here and you can also fish from the shores of the Kananaskis Lake. So these three itineraries are really for I guess a bit more of an independent traveller having the car hire there but also for the more adventurous. So for those that really want to get out into the great outdoors and explore what um, BC and Alberta are really all about. The last one of our new itineraries is um, one that I think is really exciting and it's going to be for your more adventurous um, clients, that's for sure. So Journey Through the Clouds Mountain Adventures. So they're heading from Vancouver up to Jasper on board the train for that two-day journey. In Jasper, they'll board a helicopter and they'll go out to the CMH Caribous for a three-night stay 
they'll then helicopter back into Jasper before they board our Rocky Mountaineer coaches um, that we partner with Brewster Coaches for, heading down through Lake Louise for a stop and a sightsee, and then two nights in Banff and then finish up with an overnight in Calgary. And this particular one does include the panoramic helicopter tour um, just near the township of Kananaska. So basically, whilst your clients spend those three nights out at the CMH Caribous, the um, lodge itself will equip the clients with all of the hiking gear required to adventure into the high crunch country terrain, only accessible by helicopter. The meals are served in family style with guides eating at the same dining table and guests can take in the games room, the sauna and the outdoor whirlpool. So it's really got quite a family vibe to this particular resort um, and as you can imagine, it's absolutely spectacular scenery everywhere you look. So it is in the uh, BC backcountry, so you do head into Jasper, which of course is in Alberta, and then head back over into BC. It's a cosy home away from home that will make you feel instantly welcome. It has 28 rooms, a games room, the swimming pond, music room, massage therapy, sauna, a lounge, and outdoor hot tubs. All modern amenities. It is casual, but really dedicated team looking after you um, and basically looking after your clients for their every need before they then basically have the three nights there back on the helicopter, back into Jasper and start their journey down through the Canadian Rockies. Um, so just to also make you guys aware, we do have a couple of new accommodation locations in Banff um, that have recently come on board for the 2019 season just to try and help uh, free up a little bit of hotel inventory. We've also changed the naming convention that we use to describe our services. So you may recall we've got the Silverleaf um, service on board the train that we used to link with basically a Silverleaf hotel, so it was a Silverleaf package. Basically, we no longer have that common rated hotel, um, common rating hotels within each package. So your guests will choose a Silverleaf service plus hotel and a Gold Leaf service plus hotel. We no longer have Gold Leaf Deluxe, it's now referred to as Gold Leaf Service with a hotel upgrade to try and make it a lot easier for your clients to understand the different service levels. So basically now you'll book the Silver Leaf um, train. We will, as much as we can, combine that with sort of your three to four star, three and a half to four and a half star hotels um, in the Silver Leaf um, basically service category that we have there, um, but they're not all going to be common rated. So depending on the exact hotel you choose at time of booking will depend on the price point there that comes out at the very end um, for your final pricing for your client's package. And then the same goes with Gold Leaf. So we've got the Gold Leaf Service Plus Hotel, which is going to be your four and a half to five star, quite a few Fairmont properties in there. But again, each hotel is not common rated, so it's going to be a different price point depending on the hotel that you and your clients choose and um, what availability we have there as well. So um, the pricing will be displayed in the tariff, which you can find on our website, and it will be based on the Pacific Hotel with the Pacific Room category that is mapped to that specific package. Changes to the room type or the hotel will, of course, change the package price. So Rocky Mountaineer, we have two service levels. We have silver leaf and gold leaf in an all dome fleet. So you can see here our gold leaf is the bi level and silver leaf is the single level, but um, they've all got the dome windows, so for excellent viewing. So let's have a bit of a closer look. So this is our silver leaf carriage heading through uh, the Rockies. So the windows are really quite large here. You can see them here. So you can sort of see the seats just through the window here with this huge windows right up to the curvature of the ceiling. So your guests will still get amazing views. Now I mentioned there's two hosts and um, there's also one chef per silver leaf carriage, so um, looking after your guests and their meals will actually be served to their seat. Generally with silver leaf we're looking at around about your three and a half to four star hotels, so for instance the Georgian Court Hotel in Vancouver, um, we've also got the uh, Delta Hotel in Whistler as well. 
Now, gold leaf, around about 80% of Australians will travel in gold leaf service. So this is the buy level. So up here is the top seated area throughout the day with that glass window going right up to uh, the very top of the ceiling. So there's a small strip that goes down the middle that basically, um, basically holds the roof up. And then they come down a spiral staircase here into the dining cart, which is just down below here for their breakfast and lunch. And it's full a la carte, uh, five-star dining with uh, this amazing outdoor vestibule area as well. So this one here is a great image, uh, really highlighting that gold leaf dome area in the upstairs um, section of each guest carriage. We've got the outdoor viewing platform, which is dedicated to each gold leaf carriage and um, can stand anywhere from sort of 15 to 20 people at any one time. This is not something that Silver Leaf Service has. And then at night, um, you've got quite a few of your Fairmont properties, but we also use um, the Rimrock Resort in Banff and um, the beautiful Fairmont Palisar. There's a brand new Hotel Le Germain in Calgary as well that we use. Um, so for you guys, just to make your clients aware, we operate from April through to October. So for the spring, summer and autumn months, we don't operate through the winter months. Unfortunately for us, there's too much snow that uh, we just can't push through. But during those winter months, it's a really great time for us to make sure the train's ready to go um, for the spring at the start of our operating season and um, do any maintenance we need to do and any um, site refurbishments we need to do as well to make sure our trains are all at 100% uh, uh, fantastic um, capacity for your clients. So spring, bit of snow around in the springtime, a lot of the lakes are still frozen, so that's sort of your April, May time. Uh, the beautiful summer months um, of June, July and August are absolutely spectacular, but keep in mind they're the busiest throughout uh, BC and Alberta as well. So a lot of people traveling into Canada throughout those summer months and then heading into the autumn. So um, this is your September and October months um, where you'll catch the end of the cruising season, but you'll also catch the first snowfalls in the Canadian Rockies, which is pretty spectacular as well. Right throughout all three seasons, there is plenty of wildlife to be seen. So with us, you can book the Ice Explorer on the Athabasca Glacier. We've got uh, the gondola in Banff and also Jasper, helicopter rides in Banff, Bow River float trips, and we also partner with Holland America Cruise Line for that seven night return journey of the Alaskan Inside Passage. Just to give you a brief overview of our Rocky Mountaineer clients um, and basically our general demographics that we have on board out of the Australian market. So 37% aged 65 to 74 and 42% 55 to 64. Average age is 61, 82% are married and 51% are retired. And then of course the average length of trip that Aussies are heading into Canada is about 27 and a half days. So no one really wants to go for a short week long trip when um, it's a 14 hour flight there and then a 14 hour flight back. So right now we have our early booking bonus. So uh, book a qualifying package, um, 2019 package of eight days or more and your clients will receive $1,000 per couple in added value. And this runs through till the 31st of August. So they can use that added value on additional hotel nights, dining packages, cruising, transfers and sightseeing. So uh, they've got till the end of the month to secure the very best deal and then it will drop down as we work further into that season. Uh, just a little bit of contact us information. So your best option is to use um, one of your preferred wholesalers here in Australia, whoever that might be, or you can jump onto our Rocky Mountaineer website and log into your agency um, or agent profile. You can also use live chat via the website as well to make bookings. So you can email sales at rockymountaineer.com or you can phone us on 1-800-821-531. Um, I'm not sure where you are all located, but um, generally open from around about 8 a.m. in the morning until 4 p.m. in the afternoon, Australian Eastern Standard Time. So um, you can work that out for your different areas that you're located, but uh, for most people, if you're calling them in the morning, you're going to get someone there in Vancouver to help you out with all of your Rocky Mountaineer inquiries. 
So that pretty much wraps up me for this morning. I will hand back over to Charlie and um, she can um, shout out if there's any questions from you guys. Fantastic. Thanks, Millie. Great, up, great update there. So, yep, floor's open for questions. If you do have any, please type them into the chat box now. Um, very exciting new stuff for 2019, Millie. It's great to have those new um, accommodation options. People who've booked before may know that, you know, it does get pretty busy in the season. So it's just great to have a few more options out there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something that we've really focused on looking at 2019 um, because it has been, um, you would all know anyone booking Canada, whether it's with Rocky Mountaineer or outside, um, it's a popular destination and there's just not enough hotels, unfortunately, in the Rockies. So the uh, more hotels that we can contract for our standard, the better for your clients and you guys when you're booking them. Yeah, and great options there. I've, I've stayed at all three of those um, locations and yeah, all fantastic, particularly Sunshine Village to stay right up there on the mountain um, is just beautiful. And there is a great hot tub up there, so it's definitely worth going up to Sunshine Village for the hot tub. Just worth the hot tub for the trip. <laughs> <laughs> totally. The got well, the gondola and the hot tub, that is a cool yeah. combination. And the views. <laughs> and the view, yeah, and of course being right in the mountains there. Um, but the Kananaskis Resort is, is beautiful too and yeah, Canmore is a cool little town. So a lot of people who work in Banff actually live in Canmore. So it's a bit more of the kind of the local feel as well. And as Banff has grown, Canmore has grown. So it's, um, it is a funky, a funky town. So yeah, some cool options there. Uh, no questions coming through right now. Millie, I think you must have, um, you covered it all. <laughs> <laughs> for those, for the, for the kind of high season dates, how far in advance do people need to be booking to get the dates that they want? Um, to be honest, the earlier your clients book, the better they're going to be. So when we're looking at high season, uh, they should really be booking now, if not yesterday, um, to get the dates, the hotels um, and the train service that they, they really have their heart set on. So if your guests are not flexible, I wouldn't recommend they wait a month, two months, three months to make the booking unless they're flexible with their hotels that they're going to be staying in and um, the departure dates that they're after. And also keeping in mind, we never get better deals from Rocky Mountaineer. So right now that early booking bonus of $1,000 per couple in added value, that is the best deal your clients are going to get traveling with Rocky Mountaineer. At the end of the month, that will drop down uh, by a couple of hundred, it will drop down again, and it will drop down again until eventually it's just the cost of the train and there's no added value for your clients. So um, the earlier, the absolute better. It's not going to get any better for your clients in regards to the booking. And then you can also always look at flights a little bit later down the track when perhaps some airlines have some um, airfare deals as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. The early booking bonus is, is such a fantastic deal. Um, Jan says, do you ever have any younger travellers like 30s, 40s? Absolutely. So um, we do have some younger travellers. They are, I guess, um, there's not too many of them, but we're getting more and more younger people that um, of course have the money. So I, I guess that's the biggest thing, to have the time and the money to spend on on board Rocky Mountaineer and just to spend in Canada in general um, is why I guess our demographic is is a slightly older demographic than, say, someone travelling in um, their early 30s, late 30s into their early 40s. But um, we've had uh, honeymoon couples um, on board the train that have just gone over and obviously wanted to go all out for their honeymoon. Um, but I was on board um, and I've been on board around about three or four times now and um, I definitely don't feel that I'm in any way putting anybody out by being a younger person on board the train. So um, generally speaking, you're looking at that average age of 61, but um, we have anyone from sort of, I would say mid thirties um, upwards on board the train. We don't really recommend children. Um, we will take them, that's no problem at all, but it's not, um, 
a, a very enjoy, enjoyable experience for quite a young child. There's no Wi-Fi on board, so spending um, from around about 7 a.m. in the morning through to anywhere from 5 p.m. in the afternoon on board the train can get a little bit tiresome for quite a small child um, because there's, I, I guess, not a lot for them to do. They can look out the window, they can see the scenery, um, they can enjoy the dining experience, but I guess they don't have the same appreciation for that dining experience that um, an older person or what we would have, basically. So. We definitely can accept children if you've got a young family that would like to go on board the train, and we've had children on there before, but um, just keep in mind that um, the iPads and uh, the YouTube and the games that they like to play probably won't be accessible whilst they're on board the train. Good to know. That's Although you hope, I guess, yeah, the scenery is not going to keep them entertained all day. Not like us. Unfortunately, not. Not like us. The, no. Yeah. The scenery and the, the scenery, the Baileys and the chat. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if, we, if they see a lot of bears on board the trip, then they'll be well entertained. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's luck of the draw there. Yeah. Fair enough. Alrighty, we'll sign off there. Um, Millie, thank you so much for that update. Thanks everybody for joining us, and we Great. will see and you next so time. Charlie, just to oh, confirm, sorry. we'll send yep. an email. We will send an email out to all the attendees, correct? So yes. if anyone yes. does have any questions that pop up, feel feel free feel free to flick me through an email, um, and I can reply directly back to you, no problem at all. Yeah, perfect. We will we'll have follow up from me and follow up from you, so they can watch the um watch the webinar again. And also, Millie, if you PDF the slides, I'll send out the PDF um, of the presentation to everybody as well. Okay, great. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Bye-bye.